Sunday. Sunday, December 8th, 2018. Time is winding up. This year is in a great big hurry to uh, finish on up. And today, I want us to go into the last week that Jesus lived. In particular, I want us to focus in on that Wednesday before he died. Whew. And I shall try to use for a subject on this message two days to live. Two days to live. What would your theme, words, actions be if you knew you only had two days to live? As did Jesus. When we look at Jesus in his totality, we just become overwhelmed with the great weight that he places on his kingdom and his work in that Wednesday just before he died, died on Friday, two days to live. I think I might know what my thoughts would be if I knew I had only two days to live. One thing is certain, I could not find the people that I sinned against and ask them individually for forgiveness. Couldn't do that in two days. I'm going to hurry up and get into the text and I'll just conclude this uh, by saying what my daddy said on his deathbed. Son, all of my sins have been washed away. In Matthew chapter number 24 is where we find Jesus on that Wednesday before he died. And in that 37th verse of the 24th chapter of Matthew, Jesus hits upon a critical, vital, all-important subject and theme. He says these words, but as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noe entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Whew. My friends, that's going to be a final separation. Ah, uh, between the righteous and the wicked. 
two days to live. Ah, I'm going to drive this gospel ship on down to the 25th chapter of Matthew and stop it right there at verse number one. Again, still two days to live here. And Jesus says, pretty than read. Matthew 25 and 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, Five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their lamp and their vessels with them. I'm going to read that fourth verse again. That thirty uh, fourth verse again it says, "Ah." Uh, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. They had a lamp and they had a vessel for oil. <laughs> Got to get the facts straight. Ha! Huh. Here, Jesus paints a word picture. Dr. Martin Luther King says that, uh, did say rather, that you can usually find in the words of Jesus great facets of thought that are not intended as the main point. And that is precisely what I'm getting here. Two days to live. Jesus in the scripture is the bridegroom, the king. The background of the virgins and the lamps come from the Jewish tradition in which at night there was a celebration of the solemnity of the marriage <laughs> and it really required maid servants to greet this is Jewish tradition greet the bridegroom as he came to the bride's house for the wedding Jesus, the bridegroom, and my friends, the human heart is the vessel. Uh, the oil is the grace of God. I just want us to realize here that Jesus, with only two days to live, must necessarily nail down whew, all the loose edges so that his work can be fully finished. He came to establish the kingdom. In verse 1, he speaks and says that this, my government, shall be likened unto ten virgins. The virgins represent the church number. <coughs> and the diversity of their <laughs> preparedness. Whew. Five 
were wise. Five were foolish. They all started out with oil in their lamps. But the wise uh, had oil in their vessels just in case the bridegroom might tarry. Here we get the essentialness of prepare, the, essence, the necessity of preparedness. I can hear Jesus saying that the five who were wise were not just wise or not only wise, but they were good and they were just and they were truthful. And they were holy. They were wise. The foolish started out with some grace, started out with some oil in their lamp. Uh, but they had no oil in their vessel. And verse 5 says, when the bridegroom tarried, the superficial profession Christians that start out with a limited amount of grace or with a teaspoon of grace in their hearts, uh, they're not going to be able to hold out if, if the bridegroom tarry. Jesus is coming back for the church. Huh. Oh, the majestic splendor of Jesus' artistry. Look there where it says in verse 5, they all slumbered and slipped. And there, my friend, is death. Jesus lived and he died. He was resurrected. And he said he's coming back again. Did he come back again? Wise and unwise will be slumbered in sleep. Whew. Then all those versions, this is verse 7, arose and trimmed their lamps. They got ready. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. When you start out with just a thimble full of grace in your heart, my friends, you're not going to hold out. Whew. You got to have grace in your vessel. By, whew, let me just go ahead on and hurry up and get out of this. But the wise answered and said, not so. Lest there be not enough for us and you, but go you rather to them that sell. Buy for yourself. This divine grace this personal thing. We have personal responsibility. And with just two days to live, it's not going to be time enough to make all of the necessary preparations. So may I encourage you to heed the time And go fetch oil for your vessel while it is yet time. 
Jesus said in John 9 and 4, I must work the work of him that sent me while it is yet day. For the night cometh, no man can work. Two days to live. It's just not enough time. To go purchase and be back for the wedding. Let me show you what happened, then I'm going to take my seat. I promise you. Verse 10. It says, Matthew 25 and 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. Church is the bride of Christ. And he's coming back for it. Whew. And we don't know when. And whew, they went in. The door was shut. Opportunity. Totally and completely lost. The unwise were excluded from the wedding. Ha! Huh. There's nothing more beautiful than a wedding in which two hearts burn with love. I want to leave you with this thought. I want to fix it just right. Two days after two days we're going to slumber and sleep. Jesus is coming back for us. And it behooves us to be ready. Dr. Jimson said, if you're not ready, you ought to be prepared. You ought to be prepared to meet him. Have oil in your vessels. Have your lamps trimmed and burning. Get on first base if you're not already on board. Get on board. With these words, dear Lord Jesus, I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that God raised you from the dead. Please save my soul. And bid me a speedy admittance into that kingdom. So that I may live with thee throughout all the ceaseless ages. Pray that sinner's prayer. Come on in. Because it's going to rain. Now unto him who's able to keep us from falling, he's able to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding great joy. The only wise God, to whom be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now, henceforth, and forevermore. My friends, blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. My, 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 my. God has shined.